everybody it's the photo extremist and today we are going to go over my photographic equipment and so i can show you what all i have and what it does and everything so first and foremost is my camera i use a nikon d300s camera with an 18 to 55 lens on it about 90 percent of the time I chose the Nikon D300S just because it was a step up from my previous camera. It can do video, which was I was really excited about. It has more megapixels than my other camera, and it also has a feature where you can delay the picture um, from taking place, so your picture will be like super tack sharp and perfect. And I wanted that because I was kind of getting annoyed with my old camera and how it wasn't always perfectly sharp all the time. And also, it has uh, a cool frame rate so I like that about it even though I don't really use that that much my Nikon D50 I still use this sometimes it's really good for infrared stuff and also the 360 degree panoramic stuff that I do I use this camera for, for doing that so this is kind of a specialty camera um, 6 megapixels it was like one of the first Nikon digital cameras put out there so this is cool to have now my lenses. Um, like I said, the lens that I use 90% of the time is the 18 to 55 lens. I don't really find myself in situations where I need to use any other lens except the 18 to 55. That usually does it for me. So the next lens that I use is the 50 millimeter 1.8. I use this just for it to open up all the way down to 1.8. So that's a lot of light in, so it's good for nighttime photography. And the other one I just had before, it's just a manual focus one, so that's why I stepped up and got the autofocus one. Very cheap lens. If, if you want the cheapest lens, get the 50 millimeter lens. Next lens I have is the 18 to 200 lens. The more range you have in a lens, the less sharp and the more kind of distorted the image will be. So this lens I mainly use with the video, but I love this lens because of the range that it has to offer. Next lens I have is really old crappy um, 70 to 210 millimeter. The image quality is not very good on this, so I don't even use it anymore. It just sits in my room. And then the lens after that, again, it's a very similar lens. It's a 80 to 200. This goes down to f1.8, whereas the other one only goes down to f4. Uh, this one uh, I never use. My friend is letting me borrow it, and I just never find myself in a situation where I need to zoom in that much. So I don't really use this lens hardly at all. Next thing I have is a lens reverser adapter ring. This allows me to put my lenses on backwards on my camera. And this allows me to get to focus really, really, really close up on subjects. So it basically turns my lens into a macro lens and it's for like 10 bucks or something. Next thing we have is the Hoya R72 infrared filter. This is a filter that I usually screw on my Nikon D50 because my D50 is more sensitive to infrared light than my D300. Basically, you screw this on and you can capture very crazy colors around outside <clears throat> and inside as well. Like you can turn your hair blue with this filter and you can also turn the skies really dark and the foliage really, really bright. So that's what this is used for. Awesome filter. See my infrared video if you want to know more about this filter. Next up is the Hoya ND400 filter. This is an extremely dark, dark black filter that you can put on your lens. And this filter allows you to take very long exposures during the daytime. You can get the cloud, you can capture the movement of the clouds, or you can make the water in the lake look like milk. So yeah, 30 seconds, around 30 seconds in pure daylight with this filter. Next filter is a polarizer. Extremely good for reducing reflections in your photography. They also make the skies much more rich and blue and just the general colors in your photograph usually turn out to be much more rich and saturated in color especially when you're photographing stuff outside the fogalizer filter i hardly ever use this i just bought it when i first bought my camera but it basically adds a soft glow to everything that you photograph then we got the nd8 this is much less powerful compared to the nd400 but i still use it when i want to darken things up a little bit. And last but not least, we have a 6x cross filter. This basically makes it so whenever you see a pinpoint of light on your picture, it'll take that pinpoint of light, of light and dice it so the light is 
in like an X shape. It looks really cool. All of these filters are 52 millimeter in diameter. So all of them fit on my 18 to 55 lens. Next, we have two flashes. Both of these run on batteries. One of them is a Sunpak Auto Zoom 344D. The other one that I use, that's actually mine, that I use more frequently is the Auto for, Sunpak Auto 433D. Studio Max 3, this is a studio light that you can plug in to the wall so you don't have to worry about it uh, running low on batteries. I use this inside and whenever I go somewhere and photograph something, I'll bring this along because it's just 100% reliable compared to the flashes where the batteries could go dead anytime. And it's also pretty bright compared to the flashes. It's the brightest light that I have. The RF602 wireless trigger. This is so I can put this thing on my flash and put this other thing on my camera. And when my camera fires, it'll also fire the flash automatically right along with the camera. So these are essential if you're gonna work with flashes, you need these. Another thing that's cool about these is you can use it as a wireless remote for your camera. 